To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. I am Juan Kim, voicing Pastor Caleb Su Lee Chung. We will carry on with Self-Image of the Disciple, Lesson 2 in the book, Values for the Modern Disciple. Whether one achieves anything in his life is clearly related to his self-image. Whether he can be used by God is linked in the same way as well. In the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3, it reads, Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Some people always step aside and let others take up the task, feeling that they can never perform as well as others. This may not be a show of humility, but a reflection of his self-debasement. At the other end, there are some people who always feel that they are capable of performing any task. That may not be a show of self-confidence either. It could just be a display of self-conceit. It is therefore all the more important for us to discern if we are looking at ourselves in a sober and clear-headed manner and building up a healthy self-image. The expression self-image refers to how one looks at oneself. While there are people who think too highly of themselves, some others would position themselves at the other end of the spectrum as they wallow in self-debasement. What are the signs of someone with a poor self-image? Someone with a poor self-image projects a lack of self-confidence. He would invariably decline to take on a new task when approached by his superior or pastor. Why is that so? This is because he harbors an inner fear that he may make a mess of the job or is worried that he is not able to meet the requirements. All of these point to a lack of confidence within himself. Would any boss think highly of such an employee? Would he be able to serve others well? Not at all. Such a person is held back by his own poor self-esteem. Such a person would often shut himself off from others. He would always clam up at a meeting when he is amongst a group of people discussing some other subjects. He lacks the courage to speak up and opts to keep mum altogether. He's afraid of being made fun of or worse, facing rejection altogether. As if someone is waiting to pounce on him saying, hey, how can you say that? Your views are way off. As a result, he withdraws into his shell and becomes invisible. Someone with a poor self-image would invariably look on the dark side of everything around him. If you pass him a half-filled glass, he would be mulling, why am I getting only half a glass of water? His mind would just focus on what is not there, a common trait of someone who is negative or passive. On the other hand, another person with a positive mindset would immediately respond with a cheerful thank you as he just notices the water and none of the emptiness within the vessel. This contrasts sharply against the earlier person who's obsessed with the idea that he is always less skillful than other people. Can someone with such a mentality go far? Additionally, someone with a poor self-image would occasionally act in a quirky manner or say something to shock those around him. This is done with the intention to grab their attention in the hope of drawing applause from his audience. Such a person easily shows his narrow-mindedness and will also become jealous readily. This reminds me of the ugly witch in the kid's tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. The witch could not accept the fact that Snow White was more beautiful than her. In other words, she was unable to accept herself. You see, someone who is unable to accept others would not be able to accept himself or herself either, as both traits stem from a narrow mindset. Such a person cannot communicate well with others and is not being a team player either. Thus, it is very difficult for him to get ahead in his career. People with a low self-esteem have another trait. He loves to pick on others as if that would set him a cut above the rest. It serves to cover up his own shortcomings too. 
If I can point out someone's fault, wouldn't it show that I'm a better person? Beware, he who indulges in bad-mouthing others is a gossiper. Soon you will be the butt of his idle talk. Such behavior reflects the sense of insecurity lurking within him. What a shame. This person may end up as a despicable bootlicker to protect himself from being assaulted. He would never speak his mind in meetings so as to be free from any responsibility whatsoever. He has neither the guts to act nor the confidence to bear any responsibility. He refuses to be accountable for anything as he is chained to the low self-esteem within him. Finally, as people weighed down by his low self-esteem do not have the guts to face failure. Any failure will be multiplied a thousand times in his echo chamber, enough to make him keel over. To him, it means that he's good for nothing, the scum of the earth. It is for this that he dares not stand up to failure and instead turns to blaming the next guy or find something to take the rap. For instance, it was the bad weather or he'd been drawn by someone into becoming a diehard gambler, the cause of his miserable condition. Candidly put, it is all your fault. Dear brothers and sisters, now that you are aware of how important self-image is, let us see how you rate yourself. Can you discern those struggling around you, those under the curse of poor self-esteem? Some introspection is needed to guide us out of this dark valley. Yes, we need to acquire a self-esteem that is right and healthy. So this begs the question, how does one's self-image come about? Well, the factors that have been broadly grouped into innate and acquired ones. Innate factors include a healthy body, sound mental faculties, a good bearing, and a conducive family background. If someone is born into a good environment with a healthy upbringing by loving and responsible parents, such innate factors would be helpful towards growing a healthy self-image. Overlaying these are the acquired factors such as education, family influences, shifts in surroundings, intellectual growth, financial standing, life experiences. All of these will impact one's self-image in unique ways. Dear brothers and sisters, take a look at your own past and ask yourself which factors, innate or acquired, have made you for better or for worse into what you are today. Do you see yourself as healthy or in bad shape? Trace the situation strand by strand and deal with each one accordingly. Change would be beyond me if the factor is innate, so I shall take it upon myself to accept them. For example, if I were born with some physical defects, it could have caused my self-image to take a hit. However, I can work on myself to do better and work harder on my intellectual abilities to make up for these deficiencies. At the same time, I shall work to uplift my self-image. That is pivotal. Someone with a high self-esteem would see himself to be of higher value. How can we tell if someone has any value at all? This too is something that is worthy for us to share and check out. Psychologists point out that the appearance accomplishments, and status of a person is generally used to assess his value. In short, all that matters is what he possesses or what he has achieved. Thus, the more you possess, the higher your value. If you've achieved something grand, made outstanding contributions that bring blessings to many people, your value would increase. This is generally how people assess the value of a person. Now, our values would, in turn, impact how we look at ourselves or others around us. If I set my standards on what people see from the outside, I will end up marrying someone who's good looking. If I care about what he possesses, I will look for someone rich to be my other half. Thus, if I apply these measures to myself, I will proceed towards this direction. I will work hard to affirm myself and determine my value according to what I possess and achieve as seen from the outside. Dear brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us differently. We need to return to the Bible to see our self-image. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26 to 27, it reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. When mankind was created, what was it that made him stand out from the rest, coming with distinctive honor and value? This verse shows us clearly that each person is unique like no other. The word mankind in the phrase he made mankind 
using the English translation is singular in the Hebrew language. In other words, it can be translated as each person is made by God. God created each person differently, just as no two snowflakes are identical to each other. Each person is an elaborate masterpiece crafted by his own hands. Hence, there is no need for anyone to compare with someone or fight to be his equal. Nor is there a need to be above someone else because he would then be below me. That cannot be right. You are no one but yourself and have to accept yourself as such. No one else can replace you. If everyone seeks to be someone else, who would take your place? You are no one but yourself, so do your part well. God is honorable. He created us in his own image, which means that we are honorable too. Why do we say that God is honorable then? In the verse, then God said, let us make mankind in our image. The word translated into us in English is an honorific plural in the Semitic tongue, which means that God is exceedingly honorable. and So is his image. God has placed this honorable image into our lives. This image, according to Calvin, refers to the invisible attributes of God, including morality or sacred love, divinity, justice, creativity, spirituality. Karl Barth took it one step further and postulated that this image points to these corresponding relationships. That is, the triune God is also a relational God. He has also put in place these relationships in mankind, thereby enabling a beautiful connection amongst man, God, and the creation around us. As a result, we are able to let the glory of God shine through these harmonious relationships, which clearly sets us apart from other animals. This is what the honor of man is all about. You and I are people with honor. You and I are different from each other. And God has elevated us to be above everything else so that we manage ourselves well, take care of this land without exploiting it, of course. Coexist with it well because mankind represents the apex of his creation. We are exceedingly thankful to God. You and I should not look down on ourselves because you have the image of God. This core will never change. You will have the image of God forever and will be honorable forever even if you are penniless or have nothing, I've done nothing at all. We are exceedingly thankful to God. You and I should not look down on ourselves because you have the image of God. This core will never change. You will have the image of God forever and will be honorable forever. Even if you are penniless or have done nothing at all, you are just as honorable. As such, you and I must learn to accept ourselves as we are. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are most thankful to you because you have saved us in Jesus Christ. In the beginning, you have created us male and female in your own image, but we have ruined your image because of our sins. Today, you have restored this glorious image within us in Christ. We can hold high the glory of God as a result. Oh Lord, show us how to respect ourselves, take care of ourselves, and be worthy of ourselves. Help us to accept ourselves not to think poorly of ourselves, nor give up on ourselves. Remove the inferiority complex in us that we may lead a life that is steadfast, joyful, and relaxed, not comparing ourselves with others, nor trying to ape them or follow their way of life. Instead, we want to lead a life that shows all your beauty and kindness so that we may glorify you in the days to come. We pray in the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.